Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Prey Silva, has opposed an increase in the equity shareholding provided for host oil communities in the petroleum industry bill, PIB, saying the proposed 2.5% share for them was fair. But the president of the host communities, Benjamin Taman Tamaranebi, has urged that the communities deserve 10% of 60 or after 60 years of marginalization and bearing the brunt of the negative impacts of exploration and exploitation. Now I'm being joined by the National Publicity Secretary of PANDEF, Mr. Ken Robinson, and of course legal practitioner Inibege Efiong. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's nice to be here. Great. I'll start with you, um, Mr. Ken Robinson. You, you, you're a known activist uh, in the Niger Delta. And so I'll start with this question. What exactly um, is the reason for the cut from 10% to 2.5%? Because I did listen to that press um, statement by um, Mr. Timmy Prey Silva saying that these oil companies may never declare, and if they do not declare at the end of the year, then host communities do not benefit anything. Uh, if he is making a, a point here, why are the host communities still saying that they want 10%? Explain to the layman who does not understand the nitty-gritty of the PIB. I, I think that the Minister of Petroleum Resources states and the people of the Niger Delta region are not on the same page. The 10% the that we're talking about is not 10% of profit that the, old community, uh, the operators of the oil industry in the Niger Delta will give to the host communities. Mm -hmm. We are talking about 10% equity participation, 10% equity shareholding. We want to be co-owners of the industry that is being operated and that is situated in the backyards of our people, in our communities. Mm -hmm. the, the idea of what the, host, the PIB is proposing, the host communities trust fund, is an extension of corporate uh, social responsibility, which is merely um, uh, corporate goodwill to communities and, and, and reduces oil bearing and producing communities to subjects of sub subjugation and economic slavery. We are saying that we must go beyond this idea of corporate social responsibility. We want to be co-owners of the industry that is being operated in our backyards. That's the position of the Niger Delta people. And of course, that was presented or being represented by the, by the president, Dr. Style of the host uh, communities of Nigeria, oil producing gas, oil and gas producing association. It is not about the profits that is 10% of their profit that they will give to the communities. No, we are saying we want to hold 10% equity in the operations of the industry, in the, in the operators of the industry in the Niger Delta region. That's the, that's the issue. So what the, what the Minister of State Petroleum Resources is saying is quite different from what the people of the Niger Delta being represented at that public presentation and the statements made by Dr. Style of the host communities of Nigeria, gas and oil and gas producing association. It takes me to my next question. The whole country, if not some parts of Africa, did see the fist cough that broke out yesterday um, during that hearing. Uh, it makes me wonder, are there people from the host community who completely agree with the position of um, Mr. Timmy Prey Silva, and, and could that have been the reason for the fist cuffs yesterday? That video went viral. Well, well, what happened, what we saw uh, at, the, at the public hearing in the House of Reps, public hearing on the PIB at the House of Reps is uh, unacceptable. It's, that's not who the Niger Delta people are, and it's, 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 it's um, distasteful. Now, having said that, we must appreciate the fact that the Niger Delta region is diverse and complex with several ethnic nationalities and tribes. It is a miniature Nigeria. And some persons in this country and some groups and organizations have exploited this variedness of the, of the Niger Delta people to undermine and subjugate the region, including the federal government of Nigeria and its agencies, and of course, even the IOCs. And we are not aware of these situations. The, the, the complexity and the, the variedness in the Niger Delta region is known to all of us. And so, as I so, said, so earlier, does this mean that exploited. there are people who truly agree uh, and are on the side of the Minister of State on this 2.5% situation, or were they divided on something different? 
That's my question. No, of, of course, uh, of course, the, the, the work played out at the, at the National Assembly uh, cannot be ruled the, the situation where that is being instigated by enemies of the Niger Delta cannot be ruled out because we have seen situations like that again and again. Don't forget that the Niger Delta people have been impoverished. We, we have been subjected to abject poverty. Our people are, are live in poverty, in, in penury. Our people are, are, are sick. Our resources, our livelihoods, our waterways, our lands have been devastated and degraded. And so it's a struggle for survival in the Niger Delta. And so some, a few persons, excuse me, a few persons will be comfortable with what is subsisting, the extant uh, procedures where we are treated like objects of pity. And then they come with uh, penuries and peanuts to, to entice some persons. And that's not peculiar to the Niger Delta people. It's not particular to the Niger Delta people. It's, it's, it's a human problem. Uh, uh, from, from Bible days, we know uh, that Esau sold his birthright for a, a pot of porridge. So it's not new and it's not peculiar to the Niger Delta people. But the majority of the Niger Delta people are saying that we do not want this system to continue. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let me say this, and it's very important that we state this very clearly. The PIB bill, the very first statement in the PIB bill says that it, 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 the, the vesting of petroleum uh, resources. And the bill says that, the, the PIB says that the, 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 the resources of Nigeria are vested on the federal government of Nigeria is territorial waters, continental shelf, exclusive economic zone is vested in the government of the Federation of Nigeria. And this obnoxious provision underpins the, the, the Petroleum Decree 51 of 1969, which dis dispossessed the people of Niger Delta of their rights to ownership of uh, oil and gas resources. Okay. And, and at that time, it, it was said that that was done uh, to stop the Biafra group from, from uh, assessing oil resources. All right. You know, I, I, but the world, I'll come, the back, I'll come back to you. Let, let's just put a pin and, there. And this, this, this Mr. Ken, let's just put a pin there. I need been... to speak to Mr. Inibaga. Just Let's put a pin there. Mr. Inibaga, let's look at the bill in its entirety. I know that you must have studied this, so you have a fair knowledge. There are some things that the bill is silent on. I'd like to state them. The bill is silent on the timeline, winding down the assets, uh, interest and liabilities of the NNPC Limited. Uh, the process may create a legal lacuna of sorts uh, as some forces may try to elongate the winding down uh, of that corporation. Uh, is this a concern that you have also, or has also been brought to your notice? Well, let me just mention to you that I was at the public hearing at the House of Representatives. I was there on Wednesday. I was, also say, I was also there yesterday on Thursday. Now, what you've referred to as fracas or fight or altercation had absolutely nothing to do with divergent views from the people of the Niger Delta on what they want or what they do not want. I was present at that public hearing. There was no disagreement by what appears to be the factions on the issue that you have highlighted, it appeared that what we saw had more to do with internal disagreement within that organization. Because I was there, I never had any faction or the factions in quote articulating different views. As a matter of fact, that was not even a public hearing because as far as we are concerned, the host communities and the civil society were excluded from that public hearing. That public hearing was skewed. It was systematically designed to undermine the position of the host communities. While the group managing director of the NNPC, the Minister of State, the, the international oil companies, and so-called other stakeholders were allowed to speak to memorandum that they had submitted, were given time to elaborate on the issue they had highlighted. When it came for, to the turn of the host communities, which again was made the last item, you, you can see the, the consistency in the disdain. When it came to attending to the question of the host communities in the PIB, the chairman of the committee and the committee now changed the rules by saying that host communities and civil society should just go 
and adopt their memo without elaborating on what is contained in the memo or without making any statement. So that really infuriated people. And despite protest, despite agitation that they should allow us to make representation, we were denied that opportunity. Now, let me also mention to you that the 2.5% that they are talking about, it's not even 2.5% of profit. It would have even been better. If what Mr. Ken Robinson is saying is actually what the PIB is talking about. What this 2.5% is, they're talking about 2.5% of operational cost. Exactly, and that's what the, the minister was re referring that to. In a year, ExxonMobil can say, we spent 200 million as operational cost. Therefore, 2.5% of that amount will go to host communities. This is very ridiculous. This shows a further you know, demonstration of the disregard that they have for us. Now, on the question that you have raised, one problem that this PIB has, which Nigerians are not paying attention to, and which I discovered at the public hearing is that the NNPC that is supposed to be deregulated, that is supposed to be made a commercial venture, that is to, supposed to be reformed, the group managing director said it with his mouth at the public hearing that he is the chairman or he was the chairman of the technical committee that drafted the PIP. So when you have the GMD of NNPC that is supposed, that is supposed to be on bondo coming out with a bill, a bill that is meant to force the NNPC that has become a cesspool of corruption to become a transparent institution, a bill that is supposed to unbundle the NNPC, a bill that is supposed to change the history of NNPC, it is the same NNPC that, is, that drafted this bill, that clearly shows you that this government is not serious, that this government is taking Nigeria for granted. There are several issues that this bill has not addressed. I'm telling you, as a matter of fact, when you look at the provisions that relates to those communities, from the incorporation of trust, the trustees who are supposed to be incorporated, the so-called PIB vests that power in what they call the set, the set lot. The third laws in this bill are the multinational oil companies. It is the third law that has posted the project to open it. Oh dear. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Nieberger, we, we lost connection with you. But quickly, as we round up now, back to you, Mr. Ken Robinson. Do you see this PIB moving forward? Because there seems to be all kinds of roadblocks. Like I have said, I just studied it briefly and I've seen so many things uh, that could be a problem in the future if this particular bill is passed into law without those issues being addressed. So going forward, is there going to be a consensus of sorts or this government is going to go without this PIB being passed into law? Don't forget that this bill has been in the making for over 15 years. And um, we will not be surprised if it was not seen Night as we will be surprised. In fact, we will be surprised if it is passed because uh, there are interests in it. as 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 poor and as bad. They do not want it in the light of the day. And as uh, we will see in the post community development of. Skewed, it's, it's lopsided again, and it's completely unacceptable to us. And for us as people and for family, we will continue to demand for physical federalism, we will continue to demand for true federalism, and we will continue to demand that there should be devolution. Okay, gentlemen, I have to let you go. Unfortunately, the internet is not letting us get the last words in, but I thank you very much. Mr. Ken Robinson is uh, the National Publicity Secretary of PANDEF, and Ine Begafiong is a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, the internet was not friendly this evening. Thank you for joining us. Well, we'll take a short break now, and after that, I'll give you my take. Well, here's my take. The APC and the PDP are in another war of words about the rot in the system under President Buhari's watch. Now, aside from the bickering and the my tenure was better than your tenure, we need to pull the curtain over our eyes. We need to address the issues of financial misappropriation, allegations of systemic corruption under the president's watch. Mr. President, you campaigned to end corruption, yet 
your, under your watch, we have had an unbroken decline from 136 to 149 on the corruption index for Nigeria. Why are you not swift in dealing with these corrupt persons as you did with innocent and SARS protesters? Well, we hoped for better and we're still hoping for better, Mr. President. We need that change that you promised us when you first ran for office. We want it now more than ever. No more lip service. We need you to act, Mr. President. I am Mary Anacle, thanking you for watching.